Hello everyone and welcome to Next Week Last Night. My name is Stuart Johnson. Thank you for joining me. We've got a great show in store for you. Um, I'm still here. I know. I'm almost as surprised as you are. I thought for sure that after the last episode I'd be cancelled by now. But uh, here I am. Don't worry though, I'm sure it's still coming. It's just that cancel culture moves at the same speed as Internet Explorer. Which is funny because you'd think keyboard warriors would use Google Chrome. Anyway, speaking of last week's episode, the Academy has indeed released its list of nominees, and as is the case almost every year, it consists mostly of movies none of us have ever heard of. Um, of course, the nominations are being hailed as historically diverse, but whether or not these movies are actually any good, I frankly have no idea. Uh, in other news, Joe Biden became a meme last week. Who would have thought an old man falling down some stairs would be so funny to people? Uh, Almost is funny, and I think you'll appreciate this, as uh, a naval traffic jam in the Suez Canal holding up $9 billion worth of merchandise per day. Now that is funny. Because we are a species that has cracked space travel, harnessed the power of nuclear fission, and found a way to artificially create biological life. But when it comes to unjamming a ship that parked sideways in a narrow passageway, well, we're just fucking stumped. Don't worry, though. I know what to do. See, this is just like when your pizza box gets stuck in the trash chute. See, what you need to do is you need to grab a big broom and just ram that fucker down there till it reaches the next floor under, and then it's not your problem anymore. So the real test of our modern science here is, can we make a giant broom? Serbia has also become an international beacon in the last few days. Um, due to their brave and um, heartwarming efforts to distribute uh, free vaccination jabs to people of all countries, both out of the goodness of their hearts and, of course, due to their need to get rid of those vaccines before they expire, because, God damn it, we paid good money for those jabs, so someone is using them. In less happy Balkan news, Belarus, a country you think about so little you may mistake it for a character played by Kristen Stewart in a terrible vampire movie, um, has just been banned from something called, let me see, um, the Eurovision Song Contest. I promise this is a real thing. Uh, for twice, submitting a song that featured references to police violence against protesters following the totally not rigged elections in Belarus last year. Which is a dick move by Belarus. I mean, it's bad enough you're already an authoritarian state with no regard for democracy whatsoever that cast out a legitimately elected leader and then beat, gassed, and arrested people for complaining about it. Now you're gonna boast about it in a song? Twice? Donald Trump take notes. This is how it's done. And last but certainly not least, Britain is releasing a new 50 pound note that will feature the late great Alan Turing, a mathematician and hero of World War II, who more importantly is the main character in the Benedict Cumberbatch movie, The Imitation Game. Uh, he was tortured and eventually driven to suicide by the British government for being um, gay. Yeah. It's okay, though, because now they're going to stick his face on some money, so I'm sure all is forgiven. I do find it kind of appropriate, though, that Alan Turing, now finally getting the respect and admiration he deserves, is going to be featured on a bill that most people can't get their hands on. We'll be right back. This episode of Next Week Last Night is brought to you by this lens flare, which is really annoying me, but there's nothing I can do about it. Also, it's brought to you by UNICEF. I like to think you all know what UNICEF is, so I'm not going to bother explaining it to you, but 
In case you somehow haven't heard of UNICEF, it's this really cool organization that does like charity stuff and it helps kids and it helps impoverished people and it helps impoverished people in Africa, kids in Africa, and it's just a really good idea and something that's one of the few things in this world that's not actually terrible. So please consider clicking the link in the description box below to consider uh, doting, donating to UNICEF. Uh, you can also volunteer for them. They have volunteering projects going on all the time. Maybe not right now. Uh, maybe wait until this, you know, pandemic thing calms down. Um, but definitely check out the link in the description box below um, and, and consider helping these guys out as I violently shake my camera. I really suck at these commercials, don't I? Anyway, it is what it is. Hit the link in the description below. Back to the show. Welcome back! Fun fact, this is my 901st attempt at filming this segment. So, we end today's show with subscription services. A good way to know if you have one of those is by figuring out whether you're paying to watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier or stealing it. Last week we spoke a little about Netflix and their new policy of cracking down on password sharing. But today I want to take a more holistic look at streaming services and subscription services because they are a fairly new phenomenon in our culture. In fact, just 10 years ago, the very notion of streaming was virtually unheard of. Whereas today you can get a subscription service for anything from movies, TV, games, books, coffee, wine, food, soaps, clothes, equipment, razors, shaving kits, razors and shaving kits, toothpaste, toothbrushes, gym memberships, online classes, VPNs. Hell, soon you'll be able to get a subscription for an e-girlfriend. Speaking of which, that reminds me, e-cigarette subscriptions. And that was all just off the top of my head. Now this new a la carte business model does come with some notable advantages, the biggest of which perhaps is the idea that you're paying for curated content. You're paying to get exactly what you want. So if we use Netflix as an example, rather than buying a cable package that comes with 100 channels, 95 of which you know you're not going to watch, you can get a Netflix subscription and watch what you want when you want to watch it. This new business model has also created unprecedented opportunities for content creators and filmmakers to get their more fringe ideas out there uh, due to the enormous demand for original content being created by these platforms. That's why it's likely that shows such as Daredevil, Game of Thrones, Man of the High Castle, Dark, Tiger King, and others wouldn't have been considered commercially viable on traditional cable television. It's also led to the rise of limited series, such as uh, Watchmen and The Mandalorian and WandaVision, because they don't have to conform to the cable standard 23 episode runtime. Not to mention your unprecedented projects like the Snyder Cut, which recently came out, a four hour director's cut of a movie that came out just about four years ago. Now all of this makes streaming services sound pretty great, and in a lot of ways they really are. But, they have also started to cause some problems, like the accumulating cost effect. See, the reason why back in the day so many people switched from cable to Netflix was because Netflix was a significantly cheaper option at the time. Nowadays, though, if you want to watch all the best movies and TV shows that are out there, you can't just have a Netflix subscription. You need HBO if you want to, want to watch Game of Thrones. You need Amazon Video if you want to watch The Expanse. You need... Peacock. Okay, maybe not. But you get the point. These costs, they accumulate. And they accumulate even more once you start to add in all the other stuff we talked about at the start of the segment. Now, they lure you in in a very clever way by offering you these, these great prices. Oh, just five bucks a month, just ten bucks a month, you know, or just twelve ninety nine a month. Um, and we all, because we all look at cost individually rather than collectively, well, we all go, oh, that's a great deal. It's ten bucks a month. That's, that's less than a dollar a day. 
before you know it, you're sipping your unfiltered Ecuadorian coffee whilst watching Ted Lasso on Apple TV or SpongeBob on Paramount+. Plus. The part they don't tell you about is that those great prices usually don't last. Take Disney Plus as an example. It's $3 a month right now, but do you really think it'll stay at that price a year from now? Two years from now? Three years from now? And what'll happen when these services start costing $15, $20, $25 each? That's before we count in the fact that you have to pay for an actual internet provider, and everyone needs some kind of live TV so they can watch sports and the news, which means you're probably going to have to get something like a YouTube TV or a Hulu TV, and they're 40 bucks a month each. So you're looking at an entertainment bill of upwards of $100 a month. And again, that's assuming you don't have a subscription to Bright Sellers on top of that. Now, you might be thinking, well, I'll just rotate my subscriptions. You know, I'll, I'll get one thing one month and another thing another month, and then I'll just keep canceling and resubscribing to services as I need them. Cool. That's a really good idea. You might do that. Hell, I might do that as well. But do you think most people will bother canceling and resubscribing to services every single month? No. In fact, most streaming services make their money on people who get the subscription, use the service once, and then forget to unsubscribe. It's kind of an exploitative business model when you think about it. But the reason why these, these companies are pushing streaming services so hard, and this is the really important part I want to get to, is because of the psychological effect the streaming services have on us. See, studies have proven that people are far less frugal when it comes to spending money virtually than they are when it comes to spending cash, and it's for two main reasons. First of all, it's because of the physical process of paying that you get when you pay with cash. See, when you pay with cash, there's a process involved. You have to reach into your pocket, pull out your wallet, take out the money, and then pay. You're acutely aware of exactly how much money you're spending, and you appreciate the cost of the item more because you can see how much money it's costing you. When you pay a la carte, all you have to do is sit there, push a few buttons, and watch some numbers on a screen go up or down. It feels less real. And it's easier, and therefore it's harder for us to control ourselves. I mean, come on, who hasn't gone on an Amazon shopping spree at 4 o'clock on a Thursday because they just didn't know what else to do with themselves, and then bought an inflatable Adam driver that they now have to hide from their friends and family? I get it. But guess what? So do Amazon. And they're banking on it. Which brings me to point number two. Laziness. Buying shit online is great because it allows us to be lazy. Oh, why should I go to Blockbuster and rent a movie when I can just sit at home and play it on my TV? Buying groceries? Just have Amazon deliver them. Perfumes? Get them delivered. Coffee? Get it delivered. Wine? get it delivered. It works because it appeals to our base nature. Human beings, by default, will always prefer to take the path of least resistance because it's easier and it requires less effort. Now, don't get me wrong. I have fallen victim to this same phenomenon on more than one occasion. That's why I'm telling you all this. I am speaking from the perspective of someone who understands the appeal of subscription services. 
Which is why I know how important it is that you learn to not let yourself get exploited by them. So now that you're aware of this phenomenon, what can you do about it? Well, for starters, I'm not going to tell you to boycott subscription services. Because let's be honest, you're not going to do it just like I didn't do it. It's become abundantly clear that streaming services are here to stay, just like subscription services and all that similar stuff. They ain't going anywhere. And you know what? That's not even such a bad thing. Again, subscription services come with a lot of benefits. There's a lot of good attached to them. Hell, my dad would love a subscription to Bright Sellers. This isn't an attempt to bash subscription services as a concept, just warn people of the dangers of being exploited by them. Just like how you hopefully teach your kids that downing an entire bottle of Jack, while maybe impressive, isn't actually a very good idea. So what can you do? Well, for, for starters, you can set limitations and safeguards in place to stop yourself from overspending. I, for example, deliberately don't have a credit card attached to my Steam account to stop myself from spending money whenever I want. That's why I use gift cards instead. Um, you can also uh, download apps that track your spending uh, day to day. Set yourself a monthly budget for entertainment and stick to that budget no matter what. And maybe, just maybe, when a cool new subscription service comes out, instead of rushing out to get it as soon as you can, walk away, sleep on it, wait a day, and if the morning after it still seems like a good idea, by all means, go for it. That's really all it takes. There's no grand science here. It's just about understanding your financial circumstances and using your head. That's all it takes. To wrap things up, um, I would like to say a quick word to these to the actual streaming companies themselves here. Um, and just to say that, you know, a saturated market doesn't really work for you guys either, particularly uh, streamers like Netflix and HBO. You should probably hope that this wild west of subscription services and streaming that we're currently in doesn't last. Because when audiences can't afford to pay to watch the content they want to watch, they'll find other means of doing it. And you can implement all the draconian rules and laws you like, it's not going to stop them. The best way to stop piracy is to make paying for the product affordable. Because more often than not, piracy is a necessity not a choice. Anyway, that's our show. That does it for today. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Don't worry, it doesn't cost you anything here except your time and maybe your dignity. Um, but yeah, make sure to subscribe. We got brand new uh, movies, shows, web series, sketches, essays, uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff coming out every single week. Weekly content coming your way right here on NLM Productions. So hit that subscribe button uh, and make sure to watch this space. I'm off to go watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Disney+. Plus. Um, I'll see you next time. Have a good one.